My name is Sid Finkelstein. I'm a professor here at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. I run the Leadership Center and teach courses on strategy and leadership to uh, great uh, MBA students at Tuck. And, um, uh, and this is another edition of Sid Ways In, the discussion around one of my BBC columns with a, uh, with a guest host. And today I'm delighted to welcome uh, as our guest host, uh, Adam Hewson. Adam, would you Hi, like Sid. to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, Adam Hewson. I'm uh, T15 here at uh, Tug School of Business, um, which is rapidly coming to an end as I uh, venture off into uh, consulting afterwards. Um, just beforehand, I was in, uh, in uh, retail and real estate, um, working across Europe uh, before coming here to Tuck. And do you know where you're heading off to? Yeah, so I'm going into management consulting. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, this topic today about um, the sharing economy is something you probably thought a lot about. Mm -hmm. um, it's something your entire generation has been involved in creating, um, but also as a kind of a strategy challenge. Uh, how do you build these companies and what are some of the challenges? So. Um, uh, the column uh, is really around uh, Uber and TaskRabbit and uh, Airbnb and a bunch of others uh, that have uh, come to dominate the early days of the sharing economy and, uh, and the question of whether they could be disrupted themselves. So let me just ask you kind of your sense of uh, what, what uh, got you interested in the column in the first place and, uh, and then we'll go from there. I think it's particularly interesting when you think about how much they've disrupted everything mm. as they've come in here. Um, but then what would the qualities need to be of someone to disrupt them? Mm -hmm. When I look at the dip businesses that you mentioned, so you've got Uber, um, TaskRabbit, mm -hmm. um, they're sharing, but I see them as different businesses. Mm -hmm. So Uber, everybody's doing the same mm -hmm. task, whereas TaskRabbit, there's a lot of different things that people are working on there. And so someone coming in, I think, would need to meet whatever the needs are of, of those people that are mm -hmm. part of that sharing economy. Mm -hmm. So Uber, you mentioned, could there be some sort of unionization through someone offering um, an app or uh, some way of joining um, everyone together? Yeah, and that's, and that's the crazy idea, right? Yeah. Uh, can, you, can, can the drivers assemble, can the proletariat of drivers get together and create a, a union of sorts? Yeah. yeah, and I think that would be interesting. Um, someone would need to, as Uber have done, go mm. country by country to mm -hmm. work out mm -hmm. how powerful unions are and... and how interesting that would be to the drivers. Mm -hmm. But certainly if you've been in an Uber, and I've been in a number as I've been yeah. in different cities, yeah. there's often comments about pay and the, the split of the fare they get. Huh. So what are they saying? I think a lot of drivers, uh, some of them feel a little upset about uh -huh. the fare. That I like that. If we're going to see a union pay. movement, you need to have people upset. Yeah. So that the split is not that. Do you know what it is, actually? I don't, no. But um, uh, though I will say they're always very... Um, amicable as well. Sure. So it's often a, it's something they mention, but mm -hmm. there seems to be a better service there yeah. Um, yeah. that's driving them. But I think that, number one, is interesting. Number mm -hmm. two, when you think about the sharing economy and mm -hmm. what's happening on TaskRabbit, um, the question there, I think, for me is, in terms of the disruptor, there's one way of, of these people uh, offering their services, but mm -hmm. how else could they do it? So is there a way of further refining and what each person is offering. So let's kind of um, kind of fill in some of the some of the parts here. So for TaskRabbit, this is a, a startup, and there are many mm -hmm. many others like it, right? Uh, where people can offer their services to write a term paper, yeah. which I bet is very popular, uh, to go get groceries, um, just to to fix something in your mm -hmm. house. It's probably thousands of things that are yeah. being offered, right? And it, and there's typically a price tag associated yeah. with that. And then you, as the consumer, can go and choose and 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 make the deal, and they'll come and they'll they'll yeah. offer that service. And and these are people that have excess capacity, excess time yeah. for for the most part. So they would be tougher to kind of get together because mm -hmm. they're all doing something different. Is exactly. that what you're thinking? That's my point. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. in terms of uniting them, it would be hard because someone getting groceries versus someone doing a mini consulting project for mm -hmm. you on perhaps a small business you have, mm -hmm. which is something you can ask for, right. um, it's very different. Yeah. So let's go to the maybe the, the more, I don't know about easier, but easier to see mm -hmm. case, the Uber, mm -hmm. the Uber case. And you have all these drivers, and let's just take you know one country. It doesn't even matter what yeah. country is. Because once you figure out one country, just scale it to others. Yeah. In the same way that Uber has, has yeah. done that. Uh, so um, uh, one of the things that, that I write about in the column is, uh, we use the word unionization. One of the things I, I point out in the column is, well, what about some smart man or woman coming up with an app 
that will create a, uh, a community of drivers where they could share information. Uh, maybe you could you know, sell, sell them something. Um, maybe they can uh, comment on, on their, I mean, similar to many other apps mm -hmm. probably that are around and, and would be a, a freemium model, maybe 100% free. You don't have to pay anything for it. And that would be the first step. And then maybe the next step is once they start to form some type of community where they're interacting, they have a collective, and that's a unionization mm -hmm. type of word, but they have a collective uh, common, common set of goals. And one of them would be to get paid more or at least to get a better arrangement with, mm -hmm. with Uber. So what, what do you think of that idea? Uh, basically, an idea that's coming from uh, a startup mentality, mm -hmm. uh, exactly the way Uber started, just starting with the, with the bottom as opposed to the top. I guess the big question I have on that is, is whether or not you, they, it could get enough people together mm -hmm. to, to be powerful enough. Mm -hmm. um, so you can mm -hmm. see that Uber may immediately turn around and, mm -hmm. and resist it and say, look, if you don't want to drive with us, right. terms of our contract are very clear. Mm -hmm. um, you can choose to you know, work by them or not. Mm -hmm. I think that is the biggest challenge yeah. is how much momentum someone could get behind right. that. And this is a classic problem, though, because mm -hmm. uh, you think about early days of unionization. You wanted to work for the company. Um, and you joined the union, you were going to be blackballed. Mm. Uh, now there are rules that protect uh, unions much more so. Mm. There's no such rule for the, for the startup. So um, perhaps in one city, I was saying country, but maybe in one city, mm. uh, um, you can start to create, and, and you won't get 100%. You think about market share of potential drivers. It's, a, it's actually a hard thing to measure because there's drivers and then there's potential drivers and there's people who can, as, as you know, can come in and out, you know, one day a month because yeah. they, they want to do that. So that, that is a complication. But if you can get a, um, a sizable market share of, of uh, regular uh, drivers, um, sure, Uber could say, no, we're not going to work with you. But it does limit the number of uh, potential drivers they, they would have. And as Uber wants to grow, of course, yeah. uh, it makes it more difficult. So um, I, I, I see some potential for there, but again, I, I see it as, as a, in a startup mentality because mm. I think it's, and, and I like it, I kind of like the poetic justice to it as well, right? Yeah. You know? there's, a, there's an irony that the disruptors could be, could be uh, disrupted uh, using somewhat, somewhat, similar, somewhat similar tools. Um, is this, um, this broader idea about the sharing economy, is this something that you've thought about in other venues or in your classes or as you think about some of the work you're, you're going to be doing? Because, I mean, it, it's here to stay, it looks like, doesn't yeah, it? I think definitely. I mean, I think the is growing and, and whether it be from sourcing a chef or, or from, mm. from everyday tasks, that they're out there. I think what will be interesting with the sharing economy is, is number one, quality. I mm -hmm. think that's always a big question people mm -hmm. have. And we see now that People rely most when they're looking at quality on peer reviews. Um, right. So I think things like that is, is important for the sharing economy and how it might grow. Um, so you need to evaluate the, um, the talent, the quality mm -hmm. of whatever the supplier mm -hmm. is that you're, that you're sharing. So Uber does that through their rating system, I, I suppose, do. right? Yeah. Um, and I guess that's something similar that, that, that that's done with Airbnb as well. And, yeah. Uh, I suppose TaskRabbit must do it. Interesting with that, both parties are rated, mm. so customers yeah. are rated as right. well as right. as well as the drivers. Right. I, I love that idea. Sometimes you, you uh, I bring that up in, in in the class, and it sounds really odd that you know uh, the company you're paying money to is rating you. Are you worthy as a customer? But actually, almost every company rates in some way their customer. Yeah. And they might not do it in this type of um, you know uh, interface. Let's call it. Uh, but there are plenty of customers you don't want to work with because, I don't know, they don't pay their bills yeah. on time. They require a tremendous amount of effort, and you're not going to get the same, the same margin. Yeah. So in a way, they, you know, they're just modernizing an old idea also. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, the sharing economy is a pretty cool thing. But I love the idea of disrupting the disruptors. I'd like to see if it happens, and it wouldn't shock me at all to see something like that happen. A lot of roadblocks, as you point out. Thanks for uh, being with us, Adam. Thank you, Seth.